Okay, so what are some different types of cells that we've talked about up to this point? Some were listed yesterday. The nervous system. Those are structures that do it. Those aren't the actual cells. It's ne they're part of neurons that have axons and dendrites on them. But what are some actual cells within the nervous system that we've talked about? One starts with an S. The other one starts with an O. One of them is kind of hard to say. One, these are different types of cells that what we see here we find in the central nervous system. We see astrocytes, uh, Schwann cells. So the function of Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes are very similar, but the difference is where they are found. The oligodendrocytes are found within the central nervous system, as opposed to what you can see with that of the Schwann cells, which are found in the peripheral nervous system. And that's what we're talking about here. Okay, these types of cells found in the brain and spinal cord, and then out of the Schwann cells you find all throughout the rest of the peripheral nervous system. Okay. So we begin with what we call as action potentials. And what happens with that is we know that muscle cells are stimulated because of an electrical current, and that comes from what we call action potentials, and it's this process, depolarization and repolarization of these neurons, okay? And what happens is it's a flood of these electrolytes, or ions, known as sodium and potassium, and what you perhaps may have learned or remembered from that of biology this that potassium actually pumped against concentration gradient. So when sodium diffuses in, that is depolarization. Okay? Three sodium ions diffuse in, two potassium ions go through the process of repolarization and are pumped out of the cell. Okay? And it's because since it goes against a concentration gradient, it requires energy to do so. Yes. Oh, we ran out, huh? Okay. All right. All right. Well, what we will do then is as follows. Okay, hold on just a moment. Let me. So, uh, let's do this then. You will be provided this diagram for when you have to, um, let's say, deal with a scenario that involves the nervous system. So, you, have, you can use this to describe a situation. So you don't have to memorize this. This will be given or afforded to you, okay? So even if we didn't have this written in, we talk about the SNS and the ANS. Now, when it comes to uh, just by looking at that diagram, which one works 
that you don't have to think about? Okay, is it the left side or the right side? Okay, so that you, you don't have to think about. It just works automatically. Again, that's the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so when we, when we look at these, these, these circles here, okay, different types of stimuli. Okay, so visceral receptors. Okay, uh, here we're talking about special receptors like hearing, seeing, tasting, touching. Those are the types of receptors that we see in the somatic nervous system. Visceral receptors, okay, uh, can also be with what we see and maybe what we hear. And it's these receptors that may, as we see something that frightens us, okay. So there's a stimulus whether... Uh, one of the aspects I was talking about with cross-country practice is uh, just think if we're out in the middle of the golf course, okay, and it's fairly dark out when we're doing our practice, and you're maybe running uh, maybe along the houses, and in the middle of the golf course you see what looks like there's someone in a clown outfit running across the running across the golf course and it's dark out or or if you saw someone alongside the cornfield that had a scary mask on then ran inside the cornfield okay so you see something that frightens you okay so that could be a stimulus so with the visceral receptors okay going to the afferent division, okay? Don't think A is away, okay? Axon sends away, that is true, okay? But an afferent stimulus or afferent division means it's going towards the brain, okay? Because this is two divisions, again, of the central nervous system, okay? Your brain and spinal cord. Now, when you break those divisions apart, you don't have to think about this. It's taken care of automatically. Remember, we said autonomic nervous system controls muscles of digestion, okay? Also controls your heart rate and also glandular secretions. And that's what we're talking about here, okay? This, this diagram comes from a different author, but one of the things I think you would realize or agree with that it really doesn't matter whether you take a picture of the human body from one textbook to another the human body hasn't changed and the way that the human body works does not change from one textbook to another but it's just this diagram I really like that explains uh, this process because if we look at something maybe very similar in in your textbook with this author, I don't know if they have one that goes into this grade of uh, uh, detail, for instance. So let me just check. I thought I had seen one with this author. And, and they, there may be one in here. It would be towards the very beginning of the nervous system unit. That would be my guess and understanding. Yeah, yes, there is. And notice that that is on page uh, 363, that what we see here, that it's quite different. And here it has your different divisions of the breakdown of the central nervous system. But I like this diagram much better because it does, explains better what's happening as opposed to what we see here. Yes. Yes. That's why we said don't correlate the A with a way. That's true with sending a signal from a neuron through the axon, it sends it away. But as far as this is concerned, the afferent division means it's coming towards the 
the central computer, which is your central nervous system, okay? Yes. Well, it depends on what the outgoing response is. What, what you're talking about when you touch something hot. You're going to, like, this coffee cup is extremely hot. You grab it, what's probably going to happen? You're going to want to get it put down, drop it, whatever. That's dealing with skeletal muscle because you're moving your fingers. So that type of stimulus, the somatic and special receptors are going to the afferent division because when we say we drop it, what type of muscle are we using? Skeletal muscle. So that's why we see that right here. Skeletal muscle. Okay? So with the somatic nervous system, we know that we actually have conscious control of that. Okay? Well, it's not that we have conscious control, but we know, okay, our central computer said this is hot. We want to put that down. Okay? A different aspect, these somatic and special receptors could be, remember we're talking about line judging in volleyball. Okay? So someone is rolling the ball towards you. You see your eyes are telling you, okay, I need to take a step to the right. So this, this type of stimulus is saying, okay, I'm not in line with this ball. So I'm going to take a step to the right, stick my foot out, and your, your central computer is saying, okay, I need to take a step to the right. So your skeletal muscles make you move one step to the right because you're consciously looking at that and saying, oh, it's coming this way. I'm going to take a step to the right. Because, again, the somatic nervous system deals with skeletal muscle. Okay? So it's something that you consciously have control over. You just don't realize that because your, your body has adapted over the... 16, 17, 18 years of your life to become a more efficient, efficient machine. And as we all know, we like to think that with practice, okay, whether it's with football, baseball, basketball, uh, even with that of music, the more you practice, the we'd like to think the, the better that you get. Now, notice the difference between the outgoing response in the autonomic nervous system. So do we have conscious control over your, your heart muscle or your heart rate? The answer is no. Do we have conscious control over your muscles of digestion? Of course, the answer is no. It's these different types of receptors that we really don't have any control over that would cause even like glands in right above your kidney your adrenal glands, secrete adrenaline, okay? Another aspect would be is if your blood sugar levels are getting too high, okay? So that means we want to pull sugar out of the blood because it's too high. Yes? Yes? What that could be, whether it's something that maybe frightens you or scares you, but we're, we're, we're talking about a, a stimulus that's happening outside your body. Your heart rate can go up for, for various reasons, but, uh, but what we mean by that is if you see something happening outside your body, okay, there's going to be an outgoing response. As yes. Okay. There's. Okay. The. I should say, if there's a stimulus that causes a change, okay, and right now you're just sitting there with a, uh, let's say a, a pulse rate of. We're going to say 65 beats per minute. Okay, 
So unless something drastic happens, you're going to have part of your, your central nervous system, or excuse me, part of your autonomic nervous system continually send information down. You're in a, a resting state. It's not going to vary from that too much. I mean, yeah, you might get up and walk around, but that's not a stimulus. It might go up a little faster because the demands are going up. But what we mean by changes in these is there's some sort of stimulus happening outside the, uh, your body or even like outside this building. Let's say, for instance, that uh, if the, we're showing a video and someone is, uh, hey, I'm going to get that, that A&P class. They're standing here hidden. All of a sudden, they turn around. They start thumping on the window. Okay? That may or may not frighten you. Okay, so the stimulus is you hear and see something. That's going to send a response through your autonomic nervous system, the afferent division. So then what we see happening is what's probably going to be secreted in your bloodstream. It's adrenaline. Okay? What that means is it goes back down through this pathway. The sympathetic division is what we call, it's commonly called your flight or fight response. Okay? Am I going to flee? That's the flight portion. Am I going to flee this dangerous situation? Or am I going to gear myself up for defending myself? The flight to get away, the fight to defend myself. Okay? But like I said, as you're sitting there, there's really no response that you're seeing or hearing, touching, tasting, or anything that's going to change your heartbeat. It's only if something is happening outside your body. Someone knocking on the window or someone walking through that door really quickly. All of a sudden, they just start screaming at something, and all of a sudden, you find yourself, you jump. That's an involuntary response from one of these visual, vis, visceral receptors. You have no conscious control over that. And you don't have any con conscious control over your heartbeat, but it's just trying to keep a nice homeostatic, let's say, uh, internal environment. It's when you see or hear something that can change that, that happens over here. And that was a very long answer to hopefully answer your question. Okay. Maybe past experiences or memories cause that anxiety. That's something that's outside the scope of, of this. This is just something, and maybe it's something that you see that triggers a memory. Okay. And once it gets into here, your central computer remembers that, and it's kind of like, oh gosh. I remember this from three years ago or something to that effect. Okay. Well, that's part of this division right here probably. Okay. So something, is it something that you've seen or something that you experienced or what? Okay. So. Okay. Well, those are different types of experiences that, that cause this to happen. Okay. Um, it doesn't even have, it probably doesn't even have to be this. It can be something that uh, you look at the clock and just know that 1130, I've got this big calculus exam. So something like that can trigger this to happen. Okay. Then, when we look at the parasympathetic nervous system, that's what we, ca what we would uh, categorize as the rest and repair. Okay? And what happens is, at night, your room is totally dark. It's totally pitch. And all you just have nothing but melatonin being secreted. And what that does is that causes the heart rate to slow down glandular secretions to slow down, your respiratory rate 
to slow down. So your, your uh, sympathetic speeds it up, your parasympathetic slows it down. Okay. We will talk more about this at a later time. So we just have uh, today, tomorrow, and uh, we'll show you what we mean as far as a, a type of, uh, let's say, situation that you would want to use this to help navigate you through uh, this diagram. So the rest of the time then is yours. Most definitely. Certainly. Yep. So uh, just very quickly, your, your brain may sense that, okay, our blood sugar levels are too high. So we need to pull that sugar out of the blood. Okay. So what happens is there's visceral receptors inside your bloodstream that may say, okay, our blood sugar is too high. That gets sent to the central computer, sent up through here, part of your central nervous system. So then an outgoing response would be glandular secretion of your pancreas, which would secrete insulin. And what that does is it causes the glucose to either start to go inside the cell to be burned, blood glucose levels start to diminish or get, go down. Or it may cause blood glu glucose to be start linked together to form glycogen, which can be stored in the liver. So that also starts to pull blood sugar out of the blood, out of the body and lowers the levels as well. But that's more so talking about the endocrine system, which will be our next chapter in probably about uh, two and a half, three weeks from now. All right, that's it.